Back and welcome to the program. Thank you, Andrew. The book's phenomenal. Thank you so much. Really, really terrific. Thank you. Um, I want to start that day at the coffee shop. Your life began to radically change, very unexpected for you. Tell us about that day. Well, I was in a coffee shop in Los Angeles and with my best friend, and we noticed a table next to us with Bibles on the table. We, I had never seen a Bible in public in L.A. Seriously? In, in 15, 20 years, or 15 years. Wow. I had never seen a Bible. None of my friends, we never talked about God ever once. No one talked about God. It was assumed that God didn't exist and that it was all a fairy tale. So we saw these Bibles. My friend loved to kind of stir up conversation. And so he urged me to talk, start talking to this group of people. So I turned around and I just said, are you guys Christians? Like, what's the deal with the Bibles? <laughs> And they, they were like, yeah. And I said, well, what do you believe? Because I, you know, I, I was raised Catholic. I don't even remember what, what the gospel is. I don't know what religion is. Like, tell me what you believe. Oh, they're probably loving it, right? I know. It's, like a, it's right like a Christian's fantasy of, you know, a question. Um, and so they explained the gospel. They explained what they believed. And then I got to the $64,000 question after the, near the end of our conversation. And I said, well, what does your church in Hollywood believe about homosexuality? And they said, well, we believe it's a sin. And, and what's interesting is I just kind of accepted that. I didn't protest. I didn't, I wasn't upset. I just kind of was, I was actually, I liked how honest they were and they didn't beat around the bush. They were just very open and frank about it. And so I, they invited me to church, to their church the following Sunday. And I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I'll think about it. Well, how did you, did you struggle with that decision? Or? I did. I had a week to, to mull it over, and I was like, should I do this? I don't know. And at that point in my life, I was open because I had kind of done everything, been everywhere, did, you know, traveled the world, done all these fun things, and it wasn't satisfying me anymore. And I, so I was open to something else mm. and I wasn't sure. And I, you know, of course I wanted to know the meaning of life. And so I spent the week thinking about it. And then the following Sunday I woke up and I said to myself, <laughs> self, I said, am I going to do this? <laughs> and I just like, was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. And I got dressed, got in my car and drove to this church in Hollywood. You're a little nervous. I wasn't nervous. I, I, I was more um, I just was kind of full of sort of expectation, I guess. I wasn't nervous, but uh, as soon as I walked into the church, it's in an auditorium in, in a high school, I, I heard Christian worship music. And I forgot, I forgot Christian music existed. And so when I heard the music, I was like, oh gosh, Christian music. Because... It had been satirized so much on different TV shows. And like, so I was just like, oh no. And then I was like, wait a minute, it's not bad. Actually, it's good. And, and then I found my seat near the front of the, the church. And wow, went right up front. I went up front and I just, and I, the p people who invited me, I didn't see them. I just, I don't know where they were, but I just walked up and sat by myself. And then the pastor came out and started preaching on Romans chapter seven. And while he was preaching for an hour, and while he was preaching, everything suddenly started shifting in me. And I, it was weird because I, I didn't know what was going on, but everything he was saying, every word he was saying, every sentence he was saying was resonating as truth in me, in my mind, my heart. And I was like, this is the gospel? Like, it would... What he was saying about the gospel was turning everything I thought religion was on its head. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the gospel. And um, it was really, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I couldn't, I didn't want him to stop preaching. Wow. And then he left the stay, he left the, po the pulpit and he had invited people to get prayed for on the side of the church during the second part of worship, which was lasted 30 minutes. And so I was, there was, you know, a, guy over on the side of the church. And I was like, should I go over there and ask for prayer? And if I do, it's humiliating. And what if, mm. what if this is all wrong? And what if it's all fake? And, and so I went over and this guy, I said, you know, 
I don't know what I believe, but I'm here. And this guy was like, well, let me pray for you. And <clears throat> he laid his hands on me, which was weird. And then he started praying and I, I just, the prayer seemed so intense and so powerful. And I, I remember thinking, how does this straight dude love me so much? Because the prayer was so full of love. And, and then I thanked him after the prayer. I went back to my seat and I was processing the prayer, the sermon, the, the worship music, which was still going on for another 25 minutes. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just like overwhelmed me. It was like Paul on the road to Damascus kind of thing. It was like, and I, God was like, I'm God and Jesus is my son and you are now adopted into my kingdom. And I was like, whoa. And it was like Isaiah in the temple when he sees the holiness of God, he comes undone and I just came undone. I started bawling uncontrollably for the, the rest of the service. And I was crying so hard that people around me were actually worried about me. And I just knew, and I was crying over the joy of meeting Jesus Christ but also crying over the sorrow of my sin. And, and so it was this mix of joy and sorrow, but it was mostly joy over like meeting and finally knowing like the meaning of life. It was like the curtains had parted and I could see the truth and I could see, I knew why, where I came from, why I was here and where I was going. I also knew in that moment that homosexuality, being gay was no longer a part of my identity. It was like, that was my old man and it was gone. It was just was so quick and it just was like, okay, that's not who I am anymore. That's not my life. I'm happy to be single and celibate for the rest of my life because I just met Jesus Christ. Any fear of how do you share this with friends that you were very close to that were identifying themselves as gay? Yeah, it wasn't so much fear. I was so full of joy at that point that I was, it was so euphoric that I wasn't afraid to share it, but it was an interesting time because I, it took me three weeks to tell all of my super close friends. I sat them down one at a time at dinner or whatever. And, you know, I would say, I have to tell you something really crazy. And they were like, what, are you moving? Did you meet a new guy? Like, are you- You kind of did. Did you buy a house? Like, and, and I'm like, well, I actually did meet a, new, a guy. I met Jesus. And they were, um, they were stunned, like shocked didn't know what to think. And a lot of them, they didn't really know what to say. And a couple people were pretty hostile about it, especially when I got to the part where I told them about, I was no longer gonna live as a gay man. They, they were, a couple people got really upset about that. Um, but for the most part, people, my friends were supportive and loving about it. They were kind of like, it was kind of like, I'm happy that you're happy. And I'm, yeah, that you found your path kind of thing. You know, you did something that I think a lot of people who are already Christians haven't done, is you just devoted yourself fully to Jesus Christ, all of you. I mean, you jumped in yeah. all the way and it, it, you were surrendering every part of you. Yeah. And were joyful in doing it. Well, I mean, I was, yeah, I was so blown away by God's love that day that, I mean, I would just, I mean, for like a year, I would just wake up every morning in tears just because I was like, I can't believe I know God and I'm in the kingdom and I have eternal life, by the way, which is crazy. And so I was so, and I couldn't stop, I couldn't stop reading the Bible. I was just obsessed with the Bible. And every word on the page was like, it was like a symphony. It was like every single word rang true to me. Wow. And, and I listened to like hundreds and hundreds of sermons from different pastors around the country because I just was like, I need more, I want more, I want more. Like, and I just remember that first couple of years, every time I would listen to a sermon or read the Bible, I would just start crying. Cause I was like, this is true. And I can't believe I know it. Like what a crazy thing this is. Power of the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? Don't go anywhere. I'm Staying not. Staying with us. But I do want to tell you in the meantime, this is a phenomenal book. It will encourage you. It's called A Change of Affection, A Gay Man's Incredible Story of Redemption. It's available wherever books are sold. I urge you to get a copy. And we have more with Becca to come after the break. Terry and I are going to talk to him some more about questions about same-sex same attraction, homosexuality, such as questions like this. Can you be gay and a Christian? We're going to hear what he has to say. Don't go away.
All right, well, we are back. Terry, you're usually not this close. It's nice to have you over here. <laughs> uh, we are back with Beckett Cook, author of A Change of Affection, A Gay Man's Incredible Story of Redemption. And we realize many of you have someone in your life who may be gay. And there's a lot of confusion in the church today surrounding this issue. So we're going to ask Beckett a few questions. Okay, so Beckett, someone, a friend, family member comes out and says, I am gay. And let's say you're a Christian. How do you recommend Christians, family members, et cetera, respond in that moment? Well, first of all, I'll say it's a very, that's a difficult moment because the child who comes out has had many, many years to wrestle with that internally. And by the time they come out to a parent, you're, you want the parent to be on board immediately. So, and that, and that's usually, it's usually a shock to the parent and it takes time for the parent to process that. And so, I, I recommend that both sides give each other grace because the the parent needs time to grieve and mourn because um, it is it's, it can, it's shocking to a parent and you know the parent I, needs to kind of take a step back and maybe go to a closet and cry <laughs> and pray and the child needs to give their parents grace too and but I think in that moment the best thing for a parent to do is to and I know it's hard but to just lovingly walk through that whole thing with the child and not react mm -hmm. in a, you know, really negative way. But just because my parents were, when I came out to my parents, they were very, very loving about it. They didn't fly off the handle. They didn't kick me out of the house. They were, they were loving. And you, re and a child, when they come out, a gay child remembers that moment mm -hmm. like nothing else. Forever. Yeah. Forever. You remember how your parents react. And so, so that's an important time. So, Beckett, I think the question that a lot of Christian parents that might be facing this would have is, where do you draw a line that's a standard for your family? You write in the book about wanting to bring a boyfriend home one Christmas yeah. and dealing with that. I think that's the question on people's minds is, how do I love you as my child, but say, we, we don't really stand with you? I know that's such a difficult question, and it's... I think, you know, parents have to stand by their convictions and and also be loving at the same time to their child. But see, the, the, the issue with that is, you know, when I was going through that, I knew my family loved me. Sure. But I but I also knew that they believed what who I was, who I thought I was, was a sin. So I always felt alienated from them, even and though they didn't they, judged, even yeah. though they didn't mean it. They didn't mean to. Sense, they did. Yeah. But, but I but felt alienated and judged. But to draw that line is such a difficult thing because you don't want to break that relationship exactly. with a child. So I, it's a, it, that's kind of a thing you need to go to prayer with, yeah. like with to Jesus, because you have to pray about those things. Like, do I attend this thing or do I allow this mm -hmm. boyfriend to come or not? Or do I go? That's difficult. And if do. I don't, how do I say no without my child feeling rejected? Right. By yeah. my standard. You yeah. Know? And that's the, that's the thing is you don't, you don't want that to, to cut off a relationship right. because that's the thing is my family and, and my parents and especially um, my sister-in-law, they kept, they never judged me and they never um, condemned me. They kept that door wide open for me, you know, for all those years. It was kind of like yes. the prodigal son, you know, the, the mm -hmm. father in that story, it's like the door's always open. Right. And when the son comes home, he's like, he runs to him. Yes. And it's like, that's, important to keep that channel open to mm -hmm. the child and not just like cut that off because yeah. cutting it off is not going to help. It's not going to help mm -hmm. that child come to Christ for sure. Or try and fix it immediately. Yeah. Or yeah. trying to fix it, trying to, you know, read change. Bible verses yeah. or anything like that's not going to change mm -hmm. anything. That's just going to actually push the child further away. So I think honestly, the best approach is just to love generously, love your child generously through that time mm -hmm. and just pray for them and pray and pray and pray. After your dramatic encounter with God I and you became a Christ follower, I assume people in the gay community would say, well, you're still gay, right? Or people on the other side, Christians would say, well, you're no longer gay, right? I mean, how did you answer a question like that? That I, <laughs> I was on a shoot and a photographer from New York came to LA to do the shoot with us. and. Um, he said, how are you doing, Beckett? How's life? And, and I was like, well, I'm a Christian now, and, um, you know, I, 
I, and I told him the whole story, and I said, you know, I don't, and I'm not gay. I don't live that life anymore. I'm not gay anymore. And he said, no, he first said, I said, I'm a Christian. And he said, you can't be gay and be a Christian. And I said, David, I'll get to that later. But, but yeah, the, I would never identify myself as a gay Christian because it's like, why would you identify as a greedy Christian or a gossiping Christian? I wouldn't identify as a heterosexual Christian, right? Either, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's but it's not part of the identification. So, I that being gay, that was my old man, that was my old self, and that was crucified with Christ. And so, I I don't identify as a gay. I when people ask me, what are you? I, I'm like, I'm a Christian. My identity is in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not in my sexuality. And, you know, I happen to struggle with same-sex attraction, but but it doesn't matter because I have Jesus. And that, it's amazing. I, I want to speak to that because I think if I, I imagine if I were gay and listening to you talk about this, I would say, but where do you go with all of that temptation that mm -hmm. has been a part of your life? But what I see in you and what I read in your book is that a transformation happened. I mean, it wasn't just, you got a new identity. Yeah. And even though you may have moments of that temptation, I may have moments, I, I mean, this is a, yeah. a, an odd comparison, but to gossip or to be jealous of someone yeah. else or to, and, and so you're treating that as an area that you need to make choices about in your life. But Jesus does make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, God had so much grace on me yes. that day when I when you saved me. Too. Me too. <laughs> and my my thought life before I was a Christian was dominated by sexuality. Mm. Yes. And after that day, it was diminished, you know, yeah. dramatically. So it went from like a hundred percent to like ten yeah. percent. And so it doesn't. I never miss that life. I don't miss relationships with guys at all. Um, and I and I know that this doesn't happen with everyone, but. But I don't miss that life, and I'm just, you know, I'm I'm so enamored with Christ and 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 how much satisfaction He gives me that I don't, Amen. I don't need anything else. Yes. Boy, and that's how we should all live. Amen. Being enamored. The book's with Christ. for everybody. <laughs> Please get the book. It's called The Change of Affection, and uh, it's a phenomenal read. Great story. We're so glad you came to visit us. Thank, Thank you for having me. It's so nice to Thank meet you. you. Thank all you. right, we'll see you next time on 700 Club Interactive. Bye bye.